Club and John Pettibone School updates uh, building. So I'll take this uh, before I ask Kevin to come up here. So anybody that saw my campaign or asked me, <laughs> I told them exactly what I was planning on doing Pettibone. It was to move the agencies in the E Street building, Board of Education, as well as the Youth Agency, and um, some other agencies around town. Um, the first thing I had to do first was get it cleaned out. And while well, castigated for trying to reuse uh, equipment and, and allow the community to recycle it, um, we've had a, a very successful program of doing that. And so now we're at the phase of it's, it's fairly cleaned out. We're talking about occupancy factors. So um, the idea is to move uh, the Board of Education. I will be a, addressing you, but I've, I've made everybody who's asked me uh, um, aware of what my plans are, including your chairman. Um, the Youth Agency, uh, Parks and Rec is interested in moving there, uh, Social Services, and uh, am I missing anything, Kevin? No, no, that's the it. Four that I the four, okay. Um, and the idea is that JPS will become a community center, and this is what I ran on. I mean, it shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody that my idea was to keep Pettibone School and use it as a community center. And we have a real need for it because the E Street building is an anchor around our neck. It is not ADA compliant. We're one lawsuit away from hundreds of thousands of dollars in expenses to upgrade it. Um, so I've been working on, uh, uh, you know, with our facilities people um, to identify what needs to be done for JPS with our zoning and building uh, people. There's no million dollar upgrades. There's no asbestos abatement unless we modify the building. So wherever those numbers are coming from, and believe me, I've looked for any kind of report or anything that identified you know, $10 million to occupy uh, Pettibone. Uh, I haven't been able to find it. There is, yes, uh, Mr. Wargo, Mr. Bass. Thank you. I'll get back to you. Um, the day before they decided to close Pettibone, I didn't see any, any study that says we have to spend a lot of money. So if they did decided not to close Pettibone, it would have continued and would be continuing now with no additional expense. So I, I, I don't know where these numbers of $10 million comes from. It was fine for the kids that were there. Well, Mr. I, I believe me, I, we searched for them. And it's been explained to me that those were kind of avoidance costs. So, you know, not having any building is going to save you money at the end of the day. I can say that with regard to East Street, you know, and once we're divested of it, it's probably costing us a couple hundred thousand dollars. And then the upgrades that are inevitably going to be needed, you know, will go even further beyond that. Um, but I would agree. I, I've never seen anything that said this is what it will cost to keep Pettibone open uh, and usable. So if it was usable last year, it's not falling apart. We're going on the theory that it's it's going to continue to be so, um, especially for the purposes, you know, the governmental purposes that we're looking for. And Mr. Bass. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I did happen to find some capital expenditures that the um, Board of Education did in their facilities. Um, committee that they did brought, bring to the board when they had their meeting at John Pettibone. Um, they're showing a projected cost for two boilers as a life expectancy is 25 to 30 years. The estimated time, and this was back in 2015, was within five years, so now we're down to four. That's 295000 They say the roof is well past warranty, was on the list to be replaced once you finish the work at Scattercook Middle School. Um, that's $1.388 million. Um, an oil tank needs to be replaced with the above ground unit. Um, that could be within now within 12 years, but that's $145,000. Fire alarm is nearing its absolute, 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 I can't pronounce it. It needs to be replaced. Thank you. $52,000. Parking lot needs to be resurfaced and repaved. $52,000? I can do it for Nice. A lot of money for this. Windows, uh, although the window work long-term use of the building would require that a third of the windows would need replacement, that's 118000 So just on this one form, you're at $2,066,000. I then have another form where we talk similar to the cost avoidance 
where they also talk about asphalt seal paving for, for JPS was 55,000. Um, security upgrades that you may or may not need now with the new reconfiguration of how you want to do it, that's another 119,000. So um, my question would be whether it be these monies, half the monies, a quarter of the monies, um, what's your thought process as to how we're going to finance that? I say none of those monies. I say that's pie in the sky. I say if I wanted to get a report right now, what would it take to keep Roger Sherman down all open? I could find you know, justification for $2 million. The roof is not caving in. The boilers are working. Um, that's good enough for me. And once we get people in there, we're going to have some self-sustaining tenants that are going to contribute to the cost of maintaining the Mr. Mayor, may I, yes, may I offer a point of information? Sure, so still, yeah. still um, um, uh, well, I'm offering a point of information, which I believe. Sure, Mr. Chambers. Uh, uh, Councilwoman Richardson and I had a chance to walk JPS recently with sure. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my next question is just going by the information that the uh, Board of Education Facilities had provided. You were looking at 16, 17, and just use it as a parameter now because the schools will, well, Pettibone will be now put back to use. Um, there are hours of operation, I believe, from like 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Use that example. I don't know the exact numbers. Sure. But I'm assuming a community center will be open quite a bit. Sure. Which it should be. Yeah. Um, so their natural gas costs were 45222 Electric was forty-eight thousand. Um, grounds and building repair twenty-seven thousand. Uh, my my question is, by reopening that, where would we have the funds for the? Where would they come out for the electric, um, the gas? Sure. Fair enough. So first of all, like I said, we do have a lot of interest from uh, um, nonprofit organizations that are looking to pay rent into town. Um, without getting into, I mean, nobody signed on the dotted line, but. I would anticipate a significant um, uh, amount of rental income um, from making this available as an educational and a, a kind of nonprofit resource as well uh, to help defray that. I would anticipate we're going to save some money by not having to fund, you know, Board of Ed, you know, with the board, with the uh, E Street building, uh, and to maintain that heat, electric, air conditioning, and everything else, uh, and that'll reflect, you know, ultimately back to the town. With, uh, with hopefully a reduced budget on their end for a facility that they won't be and, maintaining. And my last question, I'll defer at other members. Um, I was actually looking at the, um, the Board of Ed had done, I'm probably mispronouncing the name, they had done a Seventi, the Seventi um, study, which was moving facilities, mm -hmm. uh, done in June 2007. And when I reviewed it, it was talking about the costs for moving um, the Board of Education uh, from their two different entities, uh, one of them happening to be JPS. Um, the costs that they're talking about uh, well exceed um, millions of dollars. So I can't, I can't even fathom so how it would cost millions of dollars to move the Board of Ed from one building to the next. I, I, can't even, I don't even know where that number could possibly come from. It, it just it boggles my mind. So I was reading the feasibility study. You can have that, and well, we certainly not have to do right. that with makes, fiber optics too. Right. Right. Probably everything. Well, right. in 2007. Everything. I'm not. Yeah. But that's listen. I will get you a budget. I don't need. I don't need a study that kind of supports one result or another that was being. This, listen, closing penny bone was something that was in the works for quite some time. It didn't happen overnight. I'll get you a budget. It'll be based on real numbers in real time. And it'll identify the costs of you know, moving this, getting the building up to speed, but also the savings that we're, gonna, um, uh, that we're going to realize as a result of it, and some of the revenue and income that we're going to see as well. Yes, Mr. Richardson. Do we need to, um, you know, I'm assuming we're going to need to come up with the amount that these nonprofits would have to pay sure. rent for. So is there going to be a, a committee put together to decide how much they're going to need to pay in rent, um, and then on top of that, if we could also get um, a list of um, the 
agencies and or nonprofits that are looking to go into the building? Myself and now our economic development director are hands on on this. So when we have a recommendation for you know a rental rate or you know a lease agreement, we'll come to the town council and we'll just you know inform you of it and explain where those numbers come from. Uh, and what was your second one about the agencies? Just a list, because I know you, you mentioned the uh, youth agencies, social services, right. parks, and rec. parks and rec, and, and then, board of ed. Yeah, so just, I mean, I, just for further updates, if we can get a list of other agencies that are... That's all I, I've got right now that are interested in and that I've, that I've approached. And I put it out there, everybody kind of knows that, that this is happening, and... Um, so nobody's been shy about kind of approaching me about it. Um, but if anybody else does, uh, does approach me and if it's feasible, I'll, I'll bring it to your attention. Because they didn't have to maintain the school anymore. Um, what's going to happen is East Street is going to be sold. And that is not going to be something that the Board of Ed has to uh, maintain. Uh, the town will be responsible for maintaining the Pettibone School and as a community center. And, and that will take a significant burden off of the Board of Ed at the end of the day. Uh, we'll work with them for some kind of sharing, but ultimately, um, they are going to benefit from it. Now, where can I find that money um, from the sale? Listen, if there's anything left over from the sale of East Street and the transfer over, uh, you know, of everybody over to the uh, Pettibone School, I'd be happy to look at a way to kind of, you know, make an appropriation to the Board of Education. But, um, after my second budget referendum, you know, on the Board of Ed side, that was, you know, first one was voted down. Um, I don't see that the, uh, the, the town has, if that was their, um, you know, understanding of, of the situation as well. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I don't have a budget. I don't have a sales price. I don't have a buyer yet. This is an update. And it's a, it's a great conversation to have. Well, it, it, the boiler's going to have to be... I know. Uh, replace. So I understand. I understand where you're going. Listen, as a real estate guy, I understand. Try to get the people in, generate some income, yeah. and find the money after Every people are in the space. Sure, Mr. Chamberlain. Sure, go ahead. Thanks. As I understand it, um, prior to our arrival, that there was essentially a a queue in order within the, the board of ed. I'm not a board of ed member, so I I don't know this, but I'm led to believe by people who are on the board of ed that there was a rotation and that essentially they looked at the needs of the respective buildings and they had them scheduled as to the order in which they would be attended for things, major repairs, like roofs. Sure, capital improvement plan. And my understanding was that JPS was not near the top of the order for capital improvements before it was basically placed on the block. I would also question the whole notion that there was a commitment to sell uh, JPS and use the proceeds because as I recall, and as I get older, my memory gets kind of fuzzy, but I recall a former mayor uh, denying that there was a plan to sell the property right up until the very end. So it'd be very difficult for me to understand how there was going to be a commitment of funds from a sale that the mayor insisted wasn't going to take place. That, that comment was made right here in this room when we voted on it. I made it, and almost, and it was unanimous around the table. The nine of it. us, the yeah. nine people that sat here at that point, at that time, made the commitment to the to the community and the board of ed. But was it nine a motion or a resolution? I mean, you know, was it on the agenda? I, I don't. It didn't yeah. need to be on the agenda. It was appointed in the minutes. It was. It should. It's in the minutes. It was something that we all agreed upon unanimously. Right. And we have two members of the Board of Ed here. What did I agree to that? You agreed to it as well. We all agreed to it. You agreed to it. So when, if and when the sale of John Petty Bone was executed, that the, that the proceeds would go into the capital reserve account, Frank, and you sat here and agreed yeah, into, that, into that account so that we could do other improvements and repairs on the school. That's fine. And, and Mr. Esposito, I'm fine with doing that. If we sell East Street and there's money left over from everything, um, I think that's a great idea. I have, we're not looking to kind of pad the, uh, the town's coffers. So as that's part of really this, all the only rationale I've gotten questions from about a dozen people who said, if we sell this, you know, this land will never get back. But furthermore, what are the costs associated with relocating the people who would leave this building? Do we have that estimate yet? Well, relocating the folks with, within this building is, is part and parcel to the move to the John Payne 
Correct. So that's part of this transaction, correct? Right. We don't know what those costs are at this point. We're in the process of putting together a budget for that. When do we um, anticipate having that? We're waiting for a number of estimates to come in from the various departments, but it's not, um, I could say this, I don't expect it to be outside the realm of, it, it, let's put it this way, it's not going to be more than the uh, cost of the building, 